What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Pokemon Origins with me, the one integral. And today we are going to be covering the very first Generation 7 Pokemon revealed, although we weren't quite sure if it would be at the time. Obviously this is Magearna. So we're going to look at that, we're going to look at its origins, where it comes from and stuff like that. As always, feel free to suggest more Pokemon down below, either Generation 7 or just any other Pokemon you'd like to see. So. Starting off, we have Magearna. We don't know what number in the Pokedex it is going to be. Some people have speculated it's going to come right after Volcanion and Hooper, you know, like right after, like directly after, before we have the starters. But I myself think it's probably just going to be, a, you know, in its normal location in the decks, as in right at the bottom of the Alola decks. And of course, we don't know how many new Pokemon Alola is going to introduce, so we can't really tell, you know, what how what number it's going to be for now. But Magearna's Japanese name is actually Magearna as well, it just stays the same, and it is the artificial Pokemon. It's also a Steel Fairy type, as we know, which makes it not special because obviously we have Klefki, but an interesting Pokemon at least. Magearna is actually 1 meter or 3 foot 3 inches tall, so it's not tiny, but it's not um, you know, amazingly huge, uh, and it weighs 80.5 kilograms or 177.5 pounds because obviously it is made of steel. So then, if we take a look at the models from Generation 7, or Generation, I guess Generation 7, uh, we have, obviously, Magearna. This is the model taken from the, tra from the trailer, showing Magearna off in, in battle, show about to use the Fleur Cannon, uh, and you can see here, you know, it's hand opening out into that flower. Now, as far as you know, Magearna does not evolve from it into any other Pokemon. I wouldn't expect it to, because it's a mythical Pokemon, so it's going to be a surprise if nothing happens there. So Magearna, as I said, is basically a metallic Pokemon, it's actually bipedal, it has two legs and it uses them to walk around on, although I'm sure it could hover and fly about itself a you know, little if it wants to, and it's basically made of spheres, it has a spherical lower body, this is quite a large one, almost like a gown, um, and then it has a smaller upper body, which is you know, a smaller sphere sitting on top of it, with finally another sphere, a sphere as a head, but this one's a sort of a medium sized one in between the two, and this head is framed in a gear with these, you know, the teeth of the gear going around its, the top of its head there. It has two small arms and two small legs to go along with it, as I mentioned just now. It actually stands on these legs, but they don't seem to be doing, you know, they don't seem to be that functional apart from, of course, the flower in its hand. Uh, they don't seem to be used too much because, you know, it's not really a, a physical Pokemon. But it also has these two large, I'm going to call them ears. Uh, obviously, they might not necessarily be ears because it's made of metal. It's an artificial Pokemon. We don't really know what, what they are, um, but they are you know, decorated at least. And then the whole of Magiana's body, basically, or Magina. I'm sorry if I say Magiana at any point. Um, it's just what I'm used to saying. But Magina's body is decorated in a golden trim all over on its ears, on its main body, uh, as well as around its eyes as well. And the upper body also is highlighted with red and blue. You can see here sort of a lighter blue sort of at casing for the upper body, uh, and then inside you can see red and blue. And we'll read more. I mean, we'll find out more about this, about what this is in just a second. So, from the descriptions we've been given so far, we know that Magearna was created by a scientist about 500 years ago, uh, and that Magearna can also perceive emotions, thoughts, and feelings, and will feel you know others' pain and suffering around them. And this links into its soul heart, which is the construction in the center of its chest, which we can assume is like the red and blue bit. Who knows? Uh, but that's the soul heart allows us to feel others' pain and suffering. Links into its ability, of course. But Magearna always has the ability to become a Pokeball-like sphere when it's sleeping or when it's sad as well. So, you know, it can basically go down into its its gown section and close up, uh, sort of like a hedgehog rolls up into a ball, but, you know, Magearna you know, collapsing into a sphere, basically. And it does this when it's sleeping, obviously, but also when it's sad, I guess, it will, if it's really depressed, it will just go down in its ball and just sit there and, you know, until it's cheered up, I suppose. So that's basically Magearna, that's all we know about Magearna, uh, it's, it's design and it's backstory, but what's it based on? Well, it's evidently based on a robot of sorts, you know, a robot or some sort of, you know, marionette maybe, who knows, because uh, it's the artificial Pokemon, so we could say, oh yeah, maybe artificial intelligence links in there, robots in general, but in particular I believe it's based on a Karakuri puppet, which were mechanised puppets from the 17th to the 19th century, uh, basically, so 17th to 19th century, so that is, we're in the 21st century now, so basically it's from 1600 to 1800, which sort of fits in with the time frame of Magearna being made, like 500 years ago from now would have been, what, 1500? So that's almost the 17th century, uh, so it sort of fits in there in sort of the time frame, but also looking at you know, these puppets as well, you can see they're very similar to Magearna in that the fact we have sort of like a, 
a mechanized body but covered in clothes similar to McGinn a sort of ball gown uh, sort of thing so it sort of fits it's sort of sort of a lot there but it fits in there so what about the name McGinn well basically very simply it's a combination of ma machina and gear now machina being another word for machine um, but you could also have like you know machine and gear because ma comes from machine we have then gear and na really just comes from machina um, so really machine and gear you know um, gear machine basically is is where the name comes from there it's nothing too special so before we finish up today, taking a quick look at McGinnis' size, you can see here, standing at one foot three, one foot one meter or three foot three inches, uh, it comes up to about Ash's chest. It's not the hugest Pokemon, but it's about the same size you'd imagine it to be. You know, having it any be any bigger, you'd be sort of quite daunted by McGinnis' size. Having it any smaller, it would be too small to have any sort of effect. But that is that's really it for McGinnis. There's nothing too much extra to say there. It's a very short episode of Pokemon Origins here, but I figured I'd do McGinnis since it was the first Generation 7 Pokemon we saw, so it only makes sense that we cover it at some point. But if you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit the like button, and of course, there'll be more Pokemon Origins coming away next week. But for now, I'll be seeing you next time. Thank you for watching. Goodbye, my friends.